Okay, we're here at the front door, and the first action will be to do the ceiling. So the ceiling is going to go across this way, and I'm going to need to put my light in. And so, let me see if I can get out of the sun here. And you can see my, my piece of steel there. And so, how does one put in a can light with that piece of steel? Well, I'll show you what I have. And let me go grab it real quick. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the uh, the can light that's going to go in the uh, the front door, uh, in front of the front door there in that little walk area. So if you can think back, can lights, standard can lights, um, let me sit down here. St uh, standard can lights were usually set in a box, a metal box, and so you had to fit in the actual joy space. Now, the reason that was done is because they were incandescent bulbs. Incandescent bulbs put off heat. You have to have your air gap around it some um, to make sure that, of course, things didn't catch on fire, um, things like that. Now, fast forward to today's standards where we're using LED. And now LED, of course, puts off almost no heat. And so your parameters can be much tighter and everything can get much smaller. Now to get, I have a piece of steel that is with the light deck that actually runs right in the middle of it, yeah, right down the center where I want to put my light. A traditional can light box wouldn't fit there. I'd have to cut the steel or scoot, you know, make two of them, put one on either side. So to solve that problem, I have this, which is an LED down light, and it puts out 950 lumens, which is very bright. The color is going to be 3000 kelvins, which matches my lights that I've purchased for the outside. So the color of the light is all the same and this should be nice and bright. So what I'll do <clears throat> is I'll have my piece of wood. So let's say this is the trim or the, the, uh, the wood that's going to be on the ceiling, which is actually thicker than my can light. So my can light will actually be able to fit in this space and still have room for that steel that's above it. I'll cut a slot in the styrofoam and mount this on the side of that steel that's there. So it'll look something like that. And then this is my junction box for my wires to come in and make the connection. And then inside here, and this little section right here is the driver for this. So I can mount all of that and then of course this guy unhooks and so I don't actually have to put this in there but I'll probably leave him in there just so that makes sure everything works and it also has a nice little gasket here to make sure that um, the little critters get in there now the thing about these is that the trim edge is much smaller older can lights had a, you know trim rings were like this wide and so when you made your circle you had the ability for that that piece of trim to kind of float around there and cover up whatever mistake that you might have made cutting that hole. So this tolerance is much tighter. So to get around that, I took the diameter of this with my calipers, put it on my tape measure, figured out what my diameter was, cut that in half, get my radius, and then made this little guy, which is my template. So I can put all the pieces of wood together stick that on there draw that out and then that should make it nice and tight so that i don't you don't see the actual edges of the piece of the wood so, so i have the ceiling boards cut to length and the holes marked and they correspond with the steel pieces the, the steel channel that goes right there so now i need to drill my hole for my wire to go into there so then it can connect to the other lights as well. So right now I gotta drill the hole and then cut my channel for the wire to fit in there. So now I'm going to get my hammer drill out and go to town. How you do it. I'll go on the inside and see if it made it poked it through. 
If not, I'll take the drill bit and poke that styrofoam out. So let's go take a look. Let's see if we can, oh, there it is right there. And there's the hole. So now I gotta cut my channel for the wire to lay in. I'll use my uh, electric chainsaw. I'll just make a channel and then I can shove it up in there. And I chose the uh, to be outside of the Fox block, which is right there, which is a screw area and outside of that. So I put it in between those. The reason I did that is we're putting drywall up and stuff like that. I want to make sure that I don't hit that. And so a little bit of pre-planning on it. And I'm going to sink it in there nice and deep. The drywall screws are inch and, inch and a quarter. I'll probably need to be like inch and five eighths just because I got a half inch of the uh, styrofoam to go through. So my screws are going to need to be a little bit longer. But uh, so far we're looking good. So now let's... Uh, Let's cut some styrofoam with my little chainsaw. It's like it's snowing. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have it in there. I was going to run it straight down, but I wanted to get it away from that uh, screw flange, so I, I decided to come over a little bit. But it works really well. I use this little guy right here, the end of that, to push it in. And my gosh, it works perfect because it's not, uh, it's not sharp on the edge, and it's just like a plunger. You can just push it in there, and it is so tight. It's perfect. That wire's not coming back out. So. Let's go on this side, and you can see where I have my channel cut. And so my light, I'm gonna stick my light out here a little bit so that the wash is more right here in the front of the doorway and then washes the face of the door versus being up close and uh, washing the wall and all that. So hopefully we got it dialed in pretty good. So now I'm gonna work with the uh, drill press and do the same things as yesterday which will be to countersink all my holes right here and then we'll lay i think it's maybe four or five before i get close to my light and then we'll put the two together put my template on it cut it and uh, and then put it up okay we're processing nicely let's go in here and take a look here's our pieces so I'm ready for the uh, for that LED light. So I've taken my template and I've marked it out here. I'm gonna use my jigsaw. And uh, here's a neat little trick for you guys. If you're gonna be using the jigsaw and you want this side to be the clean side, you can use what's called a reverse. And so the teeth are going actually down and it'll say it on the actual blade. Let's see if I can get it here in the sun. There you go. Wood clean reverse. And so instead of the cut on the upstroke, which might want to be able to pull that wood up, it's cutting on the downstroke, which pushes the wood in so that that night, so that'll leave a nice clean cut around it. And I want that so when my light fits against it, I don't have any wood um, spurs or where or, you know edges that whatever you want to call that the edges of the wood um, so we'll give that a shot but neat uh, it's a neat little uh, I just came across that blade so we'll give that a shot could have used that in a, a lot of different uh, builds and projects that I was working on okay I'm up here on the ladder now and uh, I'll turn it around and show you the work that I've done so far so we have the Romex coming in Going into the junction box, coming out here for our little guy. Uh, should be about right in the middle. Hopefully my math is pretty good. I just took my little chainsaw. I'll show you what the light looks like after I got it done. I'll probably paint the trim black 
and leave the white lens part. Of course, this will be painted black to match our window frames, but right now it's just primered white. So, that is it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure and like and subscribe, and uh, tune in next time. We're rocking and rolling.